Thank you, Ranjit Singh, sir. And uh, I would like to personally thank Dr. Shubhra Sanyal to involve me, a young officer, just 10, 10 years in service to involvement at such a platform. Uh, I would like to co quickly touch upon uh, the basics of the subject. Uh, I believe there are experts who are involved in this, but I think students are also there. So I would like to touch upon the uh, brief the areas of the subject. Is it visible, sir? Uh, yes, sir. It is visible. Perfectly fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we start now, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would start from the basic, like an introduction to forensic science defines it as the application of science to those criminal and civil laws that are enforced by the police agencies in a criminal justice system. Forensic science deals with the application of the knowledge and methodology of various disciplines of science to legal matters. It, on, it involves the use of multiple disciplines such as physics, chemistry, biology, computer science, and engineering for evidence analysis. For instance, physics is used for, to understand the pattern of a blood spatter, biology to establish the source of an unidentified suspect, and chemistry to determine the composition of drugs. Thus, the role of forensic science in criminal justice and the legal system is highly critical, but is often underrated. Forensic science is the science in the service of the law. Basis of forensic is used in the investigation and prosecution of civil and criminal proceedings. It can help to establish the guilt or innocence of possible suspects. Its purpose is to provide guidance to those conducting criminal investigation and to supply to courts accurate information upon which they can rely in resolving criminal and civil disputes. An expert in forensic, such as a scientist from any technical field, will provide analysis of the evidence, witness testimony on examination results, technical support, and even training in her, her specialized area. Forensic evidence is also used to link that are thought to be related to one another. For example, DNA evidence can link one offender to a number of different crimes or crime scenes or exonerate the accused. Forensic evidence also helps in linking crimes and helping law enforcement authorities to narrow the range of possible suspects and to set up the pattern of crimes used in identifying and prosecuting suspects. For scope of forensic science, forensic biology. Apart from DNA, uh, fingerprint analysis, DNA profiling is the other commonly used forensic technique in criminal investigations. DNA being as unique to an individual as fingerprints help forensic professionals identify or confirm an unidentified person or to eliminate suspects from a list of accused. The biological evidence most commonly used for DNA profiling include blood, saliva, semen, skin, urine, and hair. However, DNA fingerprints are usually never used as the single piece of evidence in the court of law. Next, forensic odontology. Forensic odontology helps in the identification of victims when the body is left in an unrecognizable state, this is achieved through an examination of their teeth, the alignment, and overall structure of the mouth. Forensic dentists 
or odontologist aid in comparative identification of a person by examining the development and anatomy of the teeth including any restorative dental corrections such as filling it is often applied to criminal investigations for bite mark analysis next is controlled substances chemicals that are legally recognized as having the potential for abuse are called controlled substances these include street drugs like heroin and prescription drugs the ability to detect and identify such controlled substances play a crucial role in aiding law enforcement agencies in their fight against drug abuse and drug based violence next is forensic toxicology analysis logical samples to check for the presence of toxins and drugs this branch of forensic science is of prime importance in road accidents poisoning sexual violence etc the toxicology reports furnish key information about the nature of substances present in an individual pertaining to an incident it also determines if substances are normal as per a therapeutic dose or exceed the permissible limit since new variants of drugs are developed each day this branch of forensic science were evolving and demands up to date approach next is forensic anthropology it deals with the examination of compromised human remains or skeletons to help determine the age height gender and ancestry it also helps establish the time since death by identifying and examining injuries if any these analyzes key valuable leads to investigations on identifying victims especially in cases where the bodies are beyond recognition forensic pathology forensic pathology is a branch of pathology that help determine the cause of death by examining the corpse forensic medicine thus involves the collection and analysis of legal samples to deduce facts admissible in court of law for instance identification of wound patterns can help determine the weapon used to inflict the wound additionally pathologist can examine entry and exit wounds in death staining to the use of firearms or other projectiles forensic pathologist can therefore draw crucial inferences on whether the death is natural criminal or accidental next is impression and pattern evidence impression evidence is the evidence created when two objects come in contact with enough force to create an impression could involve a dimensional impression such as fingerprint or three dimensional one such as the marks on the bullet pattern evidence analysis involves identification analysis of additional information within an impression the impression and pattern evidence when used in conjunction can help establish vital links between a suspect or tool to a crime scene next is trace evidence evidence such as fibers soil hair gunshot residue wood and pollen are some of many examples of trace evidence it derives its name from its tendency to be easily transferable between objects people or the environment during a crime trace evidence often plays a private role in establishing a prime link between a suspect and the victim for instance a sample obtained from the shoes of a victim can give critical clues on the location of the crime and thus help in tracing the perpetrator next is cyber forensics it involves the analysis of evidence found in computers and digital storage media like pen drives hard disk etc its major objective is identifying preserving recovering analyzing and presenting facts and opinions about the digital information although it is mostly used for the investigation of cyber crimes it is also widely used in civil proceedings next is ballistics specialized forensic science that deals with the motion behavior dynamics angular movement and effects of projectiles such as bullets rockets missiles bombs etc the use of ballistics in forensics is mainly in criminal investigations for instance the examination of the bullet wound at a crime scene can reveal what type of gun was used to fire it and whether it is associated with any other crime in the past in fact 
statistic details are documented in a large database that is accessible by law enforcement agencies now i would like to touch upon perspectives uh, most people believe that evidence is what detectives look for when a crime has been committed but evidence is much more than traces left at a crime scene fingerprint evidence has long been the best known form of forensic evidence but there are also voice prints shoe prints tire marks bite marks tool prints ballistic examinations and writing analysis hair and fiber matching and many more including less known ones such as the analysis of blood pattern patterns and now we all know there is dna one of the tendency of forensic experts when testifying in court to exaggerate the conclusiveness of their results frequently use of or over words like match and certain is a bit cause of concern these days for example if a ballistic examiner locates with a microscope a similarity between the marks the striations or land and grooves on a bullet as well as imperfections in the interior of a gun barrel that can create such marks and similarly with the marks on a shell casing and the imperfections on a firing pin trained and experienced examiners can do a high probability estimate that this bullet was fired from this gun describing this high probability as certain or as a match will list mislead into thinking that the imperfections on the interior of a barrel are necessary ballistic witness for the prosecution in a criminal case to saying in his testimony only that some bullet was more likely than not to have come from a particular gun a probabilistic assessment that state the evidentiary value of the evidence and the expert's conclusion even though it may will have understated it one is that the testimony may have influenced the conviction thus eliminating the untainted good ground truth that is necessary for rigorous validation if we are interested in the extent to which ballistic examination for example can identify a gun possessed by the defendant as the murder weapon then we need to know whether the examination actually identified that gun as the source of bullet in the victim's body same can apply to a prosecutor's initial decision to prosecute if a prosecutor went forward with the prosecution only if all the evidence was extremely strong including the non forensic evidence then the fact of tells us almost nothing about whether the forensic evidence itself was a causal factor in the decision to prosecute were we actually to know by test firing for example which of a large number of bullets come from a particular gun and which does not and of we were then to give ballistics examiner sample of bullets and a sample of guns and ask that examiner which bullets came from which guns we would then be able to determine the which an examiner identified a bullet as coming from a particular gun similarly i want to highlight certain important questions like hair found at the scene of the crime the hair of the defendant did the cotton fiber in the getaway car come from the coat of the person accused of the bank robbery was an empty gas can in the vicinity of the fire evidence that the fire intentionally caused by a human being or arson whether defendant's fingerprints on the gas can if defendant was the arsonist is the similarity between the handwriting on the ransom note and the defendant's handwriting on a birthday to his mother evidence that the defendant is the kidnapper if the marks on a pipe wrench found by the defendant as long as this kind of evidence makes it more likely then it would have been without the evidence that the defendant was guilty of the crime charged handwriting examination provides another good example of the use misuse and validation of forensic evidence i think the ability of some purported experts to assess personality traits at least the revealed by the subject's handwriting 
right? Whether that person or extroverted, cautious or daring, empathetic or selfish, frugal or generous, and much more. Claims of expertise, graphology might possibly have slightly more validity than phrenology, but not not much more, and probably have none at all, as multiple series studies, series studies of this type of graphology established. Handwriting similarly can point again, not conclusively, to the identity identify to identity identity of the uh, uh, writer. Professional identification experts have a long have long touted the accuracy of their methods, but the existence of few rigorous tests of these methods led some commentators to express a degree of skepticism, even greater than expressed out by sticks. The reliability of handwriting identification still lags considerably behind that of ballistic identification, though and far behind that of fingerprint identification. This would hardly be enough by itself to prove a defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but it is plainly enough to satisfy the minimal standards for its admissibility as evidence. Forensic science describes which committed the crime. The evidence indicates the type of crime committed. The situation explains the time of the occurrence. Forensic evidence proves the signs of the scene of the crime. Forensic study finds out the modus operandi of the offender. Lastly, it establishes the motive behind the crime. During an investigation, evidence is collected at a crime scene or from a person analyzed in a crime laboratory and the results presented in court. Forensic science plays a vital role in the criminal justice system by providing precise information through the analysis of physical evidence, the identity of the culprit through clues like fingerprint, footprints, blood drops, or hair. It links the criminal with the crime through objects left by him at the scene and with the victim or carried from the scene and the victim. On the other hand, if the clues recovered do not link the accused with the victim or the scene of crime, the innocence of the accused is established. For instance, this also saves the innocent. After the surfacing of DNA technology as a matter of as a method of forensic science, it provides tremendous amount of information to the investigating officers that enable them to find the suspect from evidence which he has left at the scene of crime. Next. Recent history of forensic techniques provide ample grounds for caution about the reliability of those techniques, but that history also, albeit less obviously, provides grounds for being cautious about the caution. Literally, by definition, the field of forensics is about crime and identifying the perpetrators of crime is typically an aid of using the legal system to punish them. Often by it is thus easy to see why the evaluation of forensic evidence exists largely in the context of potential use of evidence to put people in prison, sometimes to execute and almost always to do at least something unpleasant to those convicted of a crime. Because the use, misuse, and evaluation of forensic techniques has so overwhelmingly been situated within the criminal justice system and its long-standing and desirable requirements of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, it is tempting to move quickly from the inability of some forensic technique to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to conclusions about the overall weakness of that forensic technique. That temptation, however, should be resisted. And it should be resisted for the first is that whether evidence is good or bad, sufficient or insufficient, depends on what we are going to do if the evidence is sufficient. How much evidence we need is a function of the question, for what? Even in the criminal justice system, forensic techniques that would be insufficient to support a conviction perhaps even in conjunction with other evidence, might well be sufficient to prompt an investigation and might also be adequate to lead investigators to look, to look in one or at one suspect rather than another. A note on DNA. 
although forensic identification by the use of fingerprints ballistics handwriting and much as still dominates the forensic world all of these techniques are in some way when we are after all in the era of dna because the chance of being identical dna is much smaller even than the chances of two people having the identical fingerprints to say nothing of two people having identical handwriting or two guns producing bullets with the same identical Legal markings, or two people looking the same to an eyewitness. DNA investigation holds out the promise of offering dramatic improvements on all of the other known methods of forensic identification. It is curious that DNA identification is so often described as DNA fingerprinting, suggesting that fingerprint identification is the ideal and ideal to which DNA analysis aspires. But that gets it backward. Fingerprint analysis, for all its reliability, is not as reliable as has long been assumed, and DNA analysis done properly is vastly better. Is vastly better than the alternatives for many or most forensic purposes. Does not mean that it is without problems. I think one of those problems is that what DNA analysis has the potential to do is not always how it is implemented in practice. Post contaminated and mislabeled, or sometimes miscollected in the first place, or even if not lost, contaminated, mislabeled, or miscollected, they may be only partial. Moreover, the chemical used in the analysis may have expired, or the analysis may be inexperienced or poorly supervised, and so on. For DNA analysis, as with almost any other human activity. is a mistake to confuse some techniques potential if done perfectly with the actual performance of the technique it may be rare for the examiner to spill a milkshake on the sample but that extreme and hypothetical situation is a reminder that there is a difference between theory and implementation and a difference between ideal and actual performance most legal decisions on the use of dna as evidence therefore are less about the science then they are about how that did science is applied by valuable humans and laboratories in particular instances in fact the inquiry is best understood as involving three parts first there is the science second there are the techniques for implementing the science and third is how those techniques have been carried out on particular occasions and, and even if the first of the three is now well accepted the second and third have the potential for making what is extraordinarily reliable in theory often far less so in practice forensic science has undergone remarkable growth in recent years including in the areas of dna collection and analysis and the reconstruction of crime scenes nonetheless too many too few professionals are capable of applying forensic science in legal matters at present forensic science plays a vital role in criminal detection the main dictum of criminal justice system is to afford fair justice undeniably forensic evidence is more real than visual evidence forensic science as a scientific evidence is benefit for criminal justice system now i would like to touch upon important judicial announcements uh, pronouncements which are relevant in this field in anil advocate anthony arik swami joseph versus state of maharashtra relying on scientific evidences including dna profile and oral evidences the accused was convicted and punished with death sentence and fined by the session judge nagpur for gruesome murder aged about to carnal intercourse and then strangulating him to death similarly in vishal yadav versus state of up nitish katra murder case the identification of the victim uh, deceased victim was difficult due to availability of a only small portion of one unburnt palm with fingers dna profiling helped in identifying the body remains by matching dna profile with parents of the deceased which helped the high court of delhi to uphold the conviction of the accused in state by the inspector of police versus manoharan the use of dna technology paved the way to execute and convict the culprit to death liable for kidnapping and killing after gang rape of a 10 year old girl by auto rickshaw driver and throwing the corpse of the victim in a running canal 
in sushil mandal versus the state represented by cbi the petitioner father of the deceased boy challenged the finding in a profiling deceased boy from the adolescent cup of mutual infatuation with a school girl and parents of both were advised by school administration to keep a check on them later the boy was found reportedly missing and after we a fully decomposed unidentified body was fished out from a lake the petitioner claimed of not identifying the body remains and clothes of his missing son he preferred habeas corpus petition in the high court accusing the father of the girl and praying the high court for directing the investigation by the cbi the dna test of the body matched with the generic genetic profiles of the parents the petitioner and his wife of the deceased the petitioner refused to accept the truth of scientific the fact dna test was repeated for his satisfaction the apex court placed reliance on scientific test including the dna profiling for human identification and accordingly closed the matter now if time permits i would like to touch upon the biometrics <coughs> part am i audible please uh, yes sir you are audible sir yes yes next next please next the identification systems <clears throat> involves accuracy speed reliability information security uniqueness and easy to operate and apply biometrics is identification or verification of human identity through the measurement of repeatable geological and behavioral characteristics in machine learning pattern recognition is the assignment of some sort of output value or label to a given input value according to some specific algorithm next basic characteristics of biometric parameters first is universal universality everyone must possess the characteristics like fingerprint voice next next parameters must be individualistic differences for example even identical twins have different fingerprints permanence should not change with age or environmental conditions next is ease for example signatures next is performance method must accurate results under varied environmental conditions next is acceptable and no exclusive sample collection routines circumvention technology should be difficult to a reader or a scanning device assess the parameter and converts it into a unique digital data a database stores the data further inputs are stored and compared with the existing information in the database first there is capture of data then processing which leads to comparison which further shows match or no match biometrics can be divided into two broad headings like physiological it involves uh, face recognition iris imaging 
रेटिनल इमेजिंग फिंगरप्रिंट्स डीएनए सिमिलरली बिहेवियरल पार्ट इन्वॉल्व वॉइस प्रिंटिंग सिग्नेचर गेट पैटर्न एंड की स्ट्रोक इट इन्वॉल्व फेस रिकॉग्निशन आयरिस इमेजिंग रेटिनल इमेजिंग वॉइस रिकॉग्निशन फिंगर प्रिंटिंग पाम प्रिंटिंग गेट पैटर्न सिग्नेचर्स वेन ऑथेंटिकेशन कंप्यूटर सिमुलेशन इमेज प्रोसेसिंग ए फेशियल रिकॉग्निशन सिस्टम इज ए कंप्यूटर एप्लीकेशन वोटली आइडेंटिफाइंग और वेरीफाइंग ए पर्सन फ्रॉम ए डिजिटल इमेज और अ वीडियो फ्रेम फ्रॉम ए वीडियो सोर्स इट कंपेयर सिलेक्टेड फेशियल फीचर्स फ्रॉम द इमेज एंड ए फेशियल डेटाबेस टिपिकली यूज इन सिक्योरिटी सिस्टम हाउ टू डी फेशियल स्कैनर रिकॉर्ड आइडेंटिटीज स्कैनर स्टार्ट रीडिंग जोमेट्री ऑफ फेस प्लॉटिंग फीचर्स ऑन अ ग्रिड पॉइंट आर ट्रांसफर्ड टू ए डेटाबेस ऑफ नंबर देन कंपेरिजन कैन बी quickly made by computer program once a match is found an identity can be verified techniques of face recognition traditional method involves surface features identify faces by ex extracting landmarks or features from an image of the subject's face for example the relative position size shape of the eyes nose cheekbones and jaw next 3d sensors capture information about the shape of a face it identifies distinctive features on the surface of a face such as the contours of the pockets nose and chin it is not affected by changes in lighting light techniques it can also identify a face from a range of viewing angles including a profile view however it is sensitive expressions next techniques of face recognition skin texture analysis it uses the visual details of the skin as captured in standard digital or, or scanned images skin texture analysis turns the unique lines patterns and spot apparent in a person's skin into a mathematical space it can be used to enhance existing facial recognition system next is iris imaging iris recognition uses pattern recognition techniques based on high resolution images of the irises of an individual eyes it identifies the approximate concentric circular outer boundaries of the iris and the pupil in the photo the set of pixels covering only the iris is then transform transformed into a bit pattern that preserves the information that is essential for a statistically meaningful comparison between two iris images here a positive id the analyzed image stats must match the one stored in the database within an accepted threshold or hemming distance there are latest techniques for this the visible wavelength imaging the melanin chromophore mainly consists of two distinct heterogeneous macromolecules called u melanin and q melanin w imaging keeps the related chromophore information it provides rich sources of information mainly coded as shape patterns in iris it may supplement nir imaging in iris imaging next is nir near infrared the majority of iris recognition is done in ir nir imaging by emitting an 750 nm wavelength light source it avoids light reflections from cornea in iris which make these captured images very noisy advantages for feature extraction procedures it's easy to recognize at the identification step nir imaging provides good quality images however it is it loses pigment melanin information which is of information for iris recognition uh, now its advantages and disadvantages advantages are like the iris is well protected against damage and wear by the cornea the iris is mostly flat and its shape more predictable the iris has a fine texture that like fingerprints is determined randomly during embryonic gestation an iris scan can be performed from about 10 cm to a few meters away low error rate the fine texture or iris of iris remains remarkably stable over many decades the disadvantages are 
iri scanning is a relatively new technology difficult to perform from a long very long distance and with uncooperative subjects as with other photographic biometric techniques iris recognition is susceptible to poor image quality with associated failure to enroll rights civil rights issues against <clears throat> identity theft from database next is retinal imaging a retinal scan is a biometric technique that uses the unique pattern on a person's retina to identify them retina is a thin tissue of neural cells having a complex network of blood vessels this remains unchanged from birth to death except in some degenerative disorders like glaucoma the blood vessels absorb light more readily than the surrounding tissue and are easily identified with appropriate lighting retinal scan maps the unique patterns of a person's retina an unperceived beam of low energy infrared light is cast into a person eye as they look through scanner's eye piece then this beam of light traces a standardized path on the retina because retinal blood vessels are more absorbent of this light than the rest of the eye the amount of reflection varies during the scan this leads to pattern of variation which is converted into computer code and stored in the database its advantages include low occurrence of false positives extremely low false negatives and reliable because no two people have the same retinal pattern and speedy results identity of the subject is verified very quickly and disadvantages include measurement accuracy can be affected by a disease such as cataract measurement accuracy can also be affected by severe astigmatism these are like medical conditions scanning procedure is perceived by some as in invasive not very user friendly subject being and must be close to the camera optics and now the post part next is voice recognition our voices are unique to each person including twins and cannot be exactly replicated voice recognition refers to the conversion of spoken words to written words by the system whereas voice printing is speaker recognition method of working speech include two components the physiological component the voice track and the behavioral component the accent the voice print generated upon enrollment is characterized by the vocal track a unique physiological trait not affected by cold or cough during enrollment the user is prompted to repeat a short pass phrase or a sequence of numbers voice recognition can utilize various audio capture device like microphones telephones and pc microphones the performance of voice recognition systems may vary depending on the quality of the audio signal to prevent the risk of unauthorized access via tape recordings the user is asked to repeat random phrases now its advantages and disadvantages benefits of voice biometric systems ability to use existing telephones can be automated and coupled with speech recognition systems low perceived in yes weak involved high falls no matching rates non applicable in case of laryngitis next next is fingerprint recognition it refers to the automated method of verifying a match between two human fingerprints the analysis of fingerprints for matching purposes generally requires the comparison of the several features of the print pattern the pattern include characteristics of ridges minutia points which are unique features found within the patterns like an arch is a pattern where the ridges enter from one side of the finger rise in the center forming an arch and then exit the other side of the finger the loop is a pattern where the ridges enter from one side of a finger form a curve and tend to exit from the same side they enter in oral pattern ridges from circularly around a central point on the finger these are technical points manish next is fingerprint sensors 
A fingerprint sensor is an electronic device used to capture a digital image of the fingerprint pattern. The captured image is live is called a live scan. This live scan is digitally processed to create a biometric template, which is stored. There are three three types of scanners. One is optical. It captures digital image of print using. Second is the sonic. Ultrasonic waves penetrate epidermal layer of layer and the. That is capacitance. The sensor forms one plate of the parallel plate capacitor. The epidermis has dielectric and the dermis. Here we can see how it analyzed. Next is palm printing. An individual's hand does not significantly change after a certain age. Unlike fingerprints, the human hand is unique. Individual hand features are not descriptive enough for identification. However, hand biometric recognition systems are accurate for verification purposes when combining various individual features and measurements of fingers and hands. The hand biometric system measure and analyze the overall shape, structure, and proportions of the hand. For example, the length, width, and thickness of the hand, fingers, and joints, which is characteristics of the skin surfaces such as creases and ridges. The user places the palm of his or her hand on the reader surface and align his or her hand with the guidance tags, which indicate the proper location of the fingers. The data is stored in the database and either enrolled or verified. To prevent a mold or a cast of the hand from being used, some hand biometric systems will require the user to. their fingers also hand thermography can also be used to record the heat of the hand or skin conductivity which can be measured modern technology nowadays incorporate a 3d scan of the palm and store a great more number of parameters used to identify an individual's palm it is more full proof than the traditional technique pros and cons benefits includes easy to use non intrusive small amount of data required to uniquely identify a user or a large number of templates can be easily stored in a standalone device weaknesses include lack of accuracy so can also be used for verification size of the scanner fairly expensive compared to fingerprint systems injuries to hands are fairly common and would prevent the hand biometric system from working properly next gate pattern gate is the biometric identity Identification scheme that analyzes the way a person walks. Human gait is the synchronized and integrated movements of hundreds of muscles and joints in the body. All humans follow same basic walking pattern, but their gaits are influenced by functions of musculoskeletal structures, limb lengths, body mass, and shape, stride length, etc. Methods of identification include model-based and model-based. Students, how one would tries to take their image data to the model? Motion based, based, it captures the outline of a motion and tries to analyze it based on data already collected. Gait analysis. The gait analysis commonly involves the measurement of movement of the body in space. Force is involved in producing these movements. Kinematics can be recorded using a variety of systems and methodologies. Chronophotography involves capturing successive images of the person's gait. Cine film or video recording using footage from single or multiple cameras can be used to measure joint angles and velocities. Cameras mounted around the room have infrared diodes to capture the gait. Higher capturing does not require suitable light like the former two is more accurate. Now also magnetic sensors can also be placed on the body. Here we can see how it gets. Limitations. Unlike other identifiers, notably fingerprints, gait is prone to a wide vari variability within a specific subject. Various factors can vary the gait of an individual: shoes, clothing, terrain, mood, illness, fitness, and fatigue, and others. Gait cannot be used by itself, but combined with other identifiers, then it yields substantial results. Signature authentication. Using an individual signature to identify. 
it takes into account the shape the stroke speed pen pressure timing information while the person is creating the signature the actual signature recognition is carried out by writing on a pressure sensitive with this pen stylus there are methods of analysis offline which is static it is based on a document which is scanned for subsequent processing all the characteristics of a signature depend on special parameters and so it is easier to forge online which is dynamic it not only detects the form of writing but also dynamic data the manner of movement while writing the pressure or force exercise when writing with the pencil the inclination of the pencil and so on the right side we can see pros and cons it is user friendly and less invasive all parameters cannot be forced low acceptance rate high cost individuals may sign their own name in an inconsistent manner this is very important false selection rate in online method is 4% and in offline method it is like around 20% next is the pet vein and blood veins is unique to every individual even among identical twins palms have a broad and complicated vascular thus they have wealth of differentiating features for personal identification furthermore it will not vary during the person's lifetime vein authentication uses the vascular patterns of a individual palm or finger or back of the hand or front of the wrist as personal identification data here we can see how sensor works measurement method of analysis it involves measurement of the shape and size of the veins in the back of the hand the vein pattern is defined skin on the back of the hand is taut when the fist is clenched the skeleton of the hand then holds the vein vein tree rigid this is definitely here we can see the vein pattern pros and cons it is not yet fully proved but that biometric ident authentication information is permanent and unique the equipment using an infrared camera is expensive and its size is huge vein structures are unobtainable in daily life difficult to forge it is very secure method of authentication because this blood vein pattern lies under the skin this makes it almost impossible for others to read or copy in addition the sensor of the palm vein device can only recognize the pattern if the deoxidized hemoglobin is actually flowing within the individual vein fast easy to use convenience just hold out a finger or a vein contactless hygienic and non invasive accuracy low frr and fr this system is not dangerous a near red is a component of sunlight it is no more expen when scanning the hand than by walking outside the skin next is computer simulation a computer simulation is a computer program or network of computers that attempts to simulate an abstract model of a particular system these include programs to identify common characteristics for example eye ear gait pattern recognition further particulars may be added to this basic model in order to make the feel individualistic and unique image processing it is a physical process you to convert an image signal the most common type of image processing is photography in this process an image is captured using a camera to create a digital or analog image image enhancement and editing includes image selection layers image size alteration cropping histogram noise reduction removal of unwanted selective blur image image orientation perspective control and distortion lens correction enhancing images sharpening and softening images selecting and merging of images of images special effects change color depth contrast image and writing color adjustments compression 
techniques in computer science and information theory data compression or source coding is the process of encoding information using fewer bits it may be lossy or lossless useful for compiling a database in biometric systems where for each sample only certain features have to be studied and stored for further use thank you i would like to thank each and everyone who has connected 